we're actually here. Um, as you know, Moments is about life lessons and uh, stories from people, like real life stories from people and their life lessons. And, and the idea is for us to get help from what somebody else has gone through. So I hope that people have been enjoying the past few episodes. And today I'm really excited because I have a beautiful young lady who has lots of beautiful stories, Miss Becky, <laughs> hey, Rebecca, yes. as everybody else knows as Miss Becky. But before we start, I just want to know, who is Rebecca? You know, just tell our viewers. We can be here Rebecca. all day and <laughs> ready. Okay, so so Rebecca is is a lover of all things good. She is a woman, age thirty eight, who strongly believes that she was put on this earth to affect the community for Christ wow. in every aspect, in every sphere, politically, socially, economically, um, you know, whatever sphere, socially. I I believe that um, wherever I'm, I've set a footprint on. Um, God's presence has to be felt somewhere, and Amen. It, it took me a while to figure to figure it out. Like, what am I doing? Here? So every day is a plus. Every day for me is, what am I discovering about my purpose? Like today, mm -hmm. uh, Rebecca is a wife. She's a mother. She is a lover of things. <laughs> uh, I will drink to that. <laughs> I'm also a lover of she things. She's a lover of things. <laughs> a, a daughter, firstborn. Mm. First born, uh, I've got how many siblings? Hold on, six. I've got six siblings. Wow. Um, yeah. And yeah, Re Rebecca just loves life. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, um, when you're talking about, besides lover of things, I love lover of things. Yeah. I love the first, the part that you spoke about being the first born. You know, the struggle. Of, I know the struggle of being the first born, <sighs> where um, you have to be this certain person. Yeah. Uh, just take me through how you, being a firstborn, how has it affected you? How has it affected your friendships, your relationships, just you growing up? All right. So I grew up in a family that was a little bit on the interesting side. I stayed with a sister who wasn't a sister, whom we later discovered. <laughs> and, you know, and I thought she was the firstborn in all my life until I think I was like grade seven or so. I thought I was I was the second born, and then she had to leave and go back, you know, to, to her mom. And then, oh, so wait a minute, if she's not the first born, then who is? who is the first born? And they're like, no, you are. So stepping into the whole first born shoes started a bit late for me because I, I didn't know how to be a big sister. I didn't know mm. how to be an older sister because there was someone mm. who was filling in those shoes, mm. and it did affect. Like later on growing up, uh, even with my siblings, um, my younger sister, the one who comes after me, at times really wears the firstborn shoes because she just grabs life by the horns and she's like, she let's go. And I'm not one who will then um, try to fight to, hey, I'm the firstborn, you better. I'm like, mm. oh, no, it's mm. okay. And she, she does pretty well when she steps into that. And then once in a while, I will come as the voice of reason. And I think... Um, that's what I've been known for, even in my friendship circles, that, okay, if you want to calm the situation, what does Becky have to say? I always come as that voice of reason. So even with the family discussions, sibling rivalries, I always come as, as the voice of, of reason. And I think that's how I've managed to step into my firstborn shoes. And being a firstborn, as I got older, I discovered I had to wear, like, second parent shoes. I moved to SA in 2000 and what <laughs> 2006 2005 i think soon after my college days uh to go and pursue like further studies in essay and then i ended up working so that joy of i'm able to send money back home and you know send my sister's clothes and yeah help. you know kaka first born feeling kaka exactly. it came back and yeah. i was like yeah who's your sister that, right i'm the sister and then you know life happens and then you're not able to do the things that you're supposed to do and then i came back to zim and then i had to wear those shoes again and hey i'm older than you but I've always said I don't want to utter those words. Like, it, why? It, 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 it must just show. It's like me mm. walking around saying, I'm a woman. <laughs> no, if you're a woman, it will show. You don't have mm. to go around uh, proclaiming that you are a woman. And, mm. you know, 
So I had to find my way again to being a big sister. And I think I can safely say I am, I'm not yet 100% there. I, I, I am there uh, in terms of, oh, they know Guti Beki is the firstborn. Um, there's something that needs to be discussed. Ah, let's hear Guti Beki. Mm -hmm. And not Guti, the final decision is with me because I, like, I allow people to, to step into the roles that they feel that they need to step into. But I believe strongly that a time is coming where the, the firstborn in me will really then just be like, right, that's she. Mm. Yeah, but for now, I'm just enjoying being a child. Child, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 family, yeah. and I'm like, no, I can't do that. And you know, there's that thing, you're my firstborn, you, you, must, you must just have money. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, you, you must have you money. You must have money. Like, Where why people, are you a firstborn? If you and don't you, have money. And you don't, like, please, can you give mm. it to the next one, you mm. know? So, so there's times when I have got money, and then I'll, like, sort things out. So firstborn, guy. And then when I don't have money, oh my gosh, I'm so crushed. Mm. You feel so, bad, right? I, I feel so bad. I feel so crushed. Because you wanna, you wanna fix everyone's life. I want life. to fix like, it. Like fixer, you know, literally. This, I, 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 I get want it. to fix. Like, yes. There's a time I was called fixer, and you're looking and you're like, but I can't fix this problem. I actually remember when my brother was like ill last year, and mm. I was like, I'm the fixer. I can't fix this. I'm. You know, yeah. I guess the only fixer is God. You know? That's the true fixer. Mm. That is the true fixer. So moments mm. where I can't fix, I'm just like, ah, Mari, you know what? <laughs> step in. Let the spirit of the firstborn just fall upon me. I don't know where mm. the money is going to come from, but I need to step up. I need to, I need to show some some strength here. Mm. So where money fails, I guess God gives me some form of wisdom to speak um, knowledge or to mm. speak a way forward. Mm. And yeah, they take it, they take it, they don't, they don't. But mm. just waiting for the money. Need to come. Where's the firstborn money? <laughs> <laughs> I know we're all waiting for it, but it will come. It will come in God's time. Yes, it will. So it you will. talked about going to SA. Mm -hmm. Take me through that whole mm. journey. You know, the journey in SA, what happened in SA, and you know, because wow. uh, I, you have the most amazing story. And, and I think a lot of young people will learn from it, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, take us through that. So I, I finished college here in Harare, and I wanted to further my studies in somatology. So somatology is the study of skin care. I was about to say, what is somatology? <laughs> it's the study of skin care and body movement. So think of your spas, think of your um, aestheticians, uh, think of your plastic surgeons. I've worked with them because of what I studied. And the beauty about beauty therapy is um, the, first, like the, the first year is like first year of med school because you are in the anatomy, physiology, cosmetic chemistry. You're doing all of it. And I, I, I just did general science, by the way. I had no biology background. I had general science. And then I get into this college and I'm thinking I'm just going to be taught how to paint nails mm. and, you know, do a pedicure. Oh, it's called somatology. Yes, somatology. Yes, I have new respect for my beauty therapist. No, no, respect. Because if your beauty therapist massages you wrong, mm. you might not get up from that bed. And then she strikes a nerve or whatever the case may be. Or, or if you're pregnant and she does a reflex on you, you are prone to have a miscarriage. So when they touch your body... They know what they're doing. They're not just touching your body to make you, oh, I feel nice. No. They are sure. literally working on your body to release tension, but they do it in a precise manner. There's, there's rules to follow. Florence, I love you. I have to say this. <laughs> Florence, she loves you. Yeah, I didn't know. Literally. Yeah. And I think I, we underestimate what yeah. somatology is. Yeah, cause so you learn about muscles. I mean, there was this muscle that I'm sure every therapist who's gone through the course will be like, what? It's called the sternocleidomastoid. It's a muscle that runs from your neck all the way back to your shoulder, and then it joins with the trapezius, and it connects to the erector spiny, which is the muscle at the back. And, you know... <laughs> I feel like I'm back in my science. I, yeah, I hated so like, science, by the way. Yeah, so learning about that and learning about the nervous system, because you learn about the whole body. Mm. Um, I wanted to further my studies. And then so after graduating, um, mom made a way, moved in with a friend of hers in South Africa, 
And before I went back to school, I looked for a job. Because, I mean, hey, I'm in South Africa. What mm. do you do when you're mm. in South Africa? Mm. Looked for a job, got a job, and I started working in Lone Hill. Mm. And yo, Lone Hill, beautiful place. Mm. And the people there are so different mm. as to other parts mm. Mm. of South Africa. And then did biokinetics. Uh, what else did I study? I did biokinetics. Oh, yeah. And then I did further skincare knowledge. So every skincare product, if it was Philoga, I would go for the training. If it was Demologic, I would go for the training. Um, if it was anything to do with machines, body mm. things, I would be going for the trainings just to add knowledge so that I'm a fully rounded um, therapist. Mm. And then I fell in love. Yeah. Like all of us. <laughs> I fell in love mm. and we got married, had my first child at the age of 23 and my mom warned me and said, I don't think you are ready. You're ready. I'm like, no, I love him. Mm. Right. Mm. And we were married for like five years, but I think I was ready for a relationship and not for marriage because mm. I had no clue what's it. Panga basana tete to sit down with me and you know kurai wa urupa phone. It's not the same as kugaris kwa pa. So when ya so uz question shachuna, um, that marriage was bittersweet. Mm. I I stayed with my in laws mm. at a young age and I saw a lot of things in my young age that I don't think any anyone younger than thirty should have experienced and mm. I went through it. Um, and, you know, seeing this man change and I was like, he's supposed to love me. Mm. Why is he not loving, loving me? me? Like, mm. I thought I was your sweetheart. I mm. thought I was, you know, your, your, your whole, your, like, mm. everything. I complete you. Yes. Mm. I, I, yes, exactly. Mm. I complete you. Um, and then on my 24th birthday, uh, he said something that hit and I was like, hmm, Okay. So this is what you're really thinking. But I, I didn't catch it on like that. My best friend had to be like, yo, did you hear what your husband just said? Mm. And I was like, yeah, he said he wants me to be independent. And you know, Did you hear what he says? He wants mm. you to be independent as if you're a burden. Like, why do, independent? But did you, don't you work? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's like, don't you do? I'm like, yeah, I do. It's like, Saka, what is he saying? saying? And I was like, I don't leave that story. Don't try to and all. Mm. But from that time, um, I started seeing things in a different light. Then my husband hit his first million. It was time Yama tenders and everything, and he applied. He was granted, I think it was for 15 million rands or something, and they were paying out in intervals. Yo, anakurara. Anakurara. And that's when I saw my husband's, or well, ex-husband's, true colors. I saw them. They unfolded, and I wasn't ready uh, for what they were bringing. And I'm mm. thinking, I'm young. I mean, our life is supposed to change. I mean, mm. we moved from staying in a room where you'd stretch your arms yeah, out like this. Like and everything. Like, yep, this is everything mm. right here to a two-bedroom apartment to a beautiful house in Glen Murray and, you know, what are you talking? Five bedrooms, mm. chi-chi, swimming pool. Everything mm. was there. I liked nothing mm. except my husband wasn't there Damn. for me. And then, you know, D-Day happened. I was kicked out of the house. This it was, yeah, it was hectic. I like was, kicked out? Yes, I was kicked out of the house. Uh, I'd caught him cheating and, you know, confronted. And I was like, oh. and I knew the person. I, I knew the mm. lady and I was like, hey, it'd be, the, it'd be your own kind. <laughs> it will be your own kind. It will be your own kind that will be batting their mm, lashes, lashes in your face and oh, come over to my house. I remember this one time, just to, you know, I, I digress a bit. <laughs> this one time she says to me, I've got paintings I want to hang in my house. Can your husband come and help me? I'm like, don't worry me. I know how to hang paintings. I will come, come and, and ha hang, hang it for, for you. you. And, uh, you know, like I, I saw the signs and I didn't see the signs. But when I finally handled his phone, that's why till today, Nyenge, I will not touch a man's phone. Mm. I don't care what my instinct or my inner gut is mm. telling me. Let mm. them do what they're doing on that phone. Mm. And bate phone mm. Like I will not. That for me was traumatic and I was mm. like, never again. again. Like I will not do it. Mm. So, yeah. He kicked me out of the house and he told me to leave my son. Like you can't. You will not. 
And yeah, that's how my marriage ended. I did try to fix it, but at this time, I don't know whether I was fixing it for myself or for my son, or I don't know what I wanted to do it for. But he was so adamant that, no, the marriage is over. Get over it. Mm. Um, words that still stick to me till today. Mm. Which part of no don't you understand? Mm. And I was like, wow, the girl can't spell. Mm. <laughs> N-O means no, no, Becky. Why do you keep forcing yourself mm. on this man? Mm. Then I uh, got into a relationship like a year or so later, fell pregnant, mm. had my daughter. Mm. And now with this guy, we were friends. Mm. But I knew him. Mm. I knew him. And mm. I knew there's a woman that he loved. Mm. And I was like, this is not going to work. Mm. Let's, let life go on. So now mm. Becky has got two kids. Mm. No relationship. Mm. She's still working. Mm. Still going to church. But there's just something about when you're abroad and, and not at home, if, if your circle, you know, like that real balance thing. Mm, yeah. Mm. If, if something is not balancing, balancing. You, your wheel is kind of wobbling. And yeah. like, why should I be wobbling when I can go back home and fix my wheel mm. and have and my wheel moving forward? So mm. 2013, made up my mind and I was like, I'm going back to Zim. Mm. I just packed my bags. I literally came back with two children. And a shangani bag, <laughs> well, a couple of shangani bags, <laughs> and a suitcase, and my daughter's pram. And I was like, I'm coming back to Zimbabwe to literally start afresh. So 2014, sorry, 2014. January 7. Yeah, January 7. I came back. And I know Gamchirwan and my sisters and my stepmom, Parod Potab. Munaka fly at Chienda good. South Africa. <laughs> And I was like, okay, God, I don't know what you want me to do in this, in this life. But my experience in South Africa was, it was eye-opening. There's a, there's a whole life that we, we still need to discover, that there's a way that they think, there's a way that they function, and when they want something, they really, uh, they really like go for it. Mm. And um, in terms of, of um, exposure, they are hungry for exposure, but it's, it's, not, it's, it's not all of them. Mm. It's like a handful. Mm. And, I as, and thank God I was able to associate myself with that handful mm. that is hungry for, you know, knowledge, that is hungry for expansion, hungry for like exploring and like, oh, what next, what next? Um, I was part of amazing uh, pr productions like the Miss, um, it was Miss Midrand. Mm. I was part of the, you know, the makeup artists, you know, backstage, um, SABC, uh, you know, like I was involved in, in a lot of things. It, mm. it, it was nice. Mm. And um, coming back home with some of that knowledge, I felt defeated. Mm. <sighs> mm. And I was like, with all of this knowledge, what am I going to do with mm. it? And Zimbabwe was like two, three years behind. Or oh, five years. Yeah. I, and I was like, yeah, and I, and I gave up. I threw in the towel. And I was like, mm. ah, man, all this beauty knowledge that I have. And then some of the things that I knew back then, I'm seeing them now. No. And I'm like, it's just a new one. Mm. It's always been it's there. It's always been there. Like, come on. Don't you believe that? Because um, I'm just thinking that I can imagine flying out, then you're coming back, Urumbazi, Changani sure, Bag. Sure, sure. First of all, what were your thoughts about yourself? I failed. And how people were perceiving you then. But over and above that, you believe in God. Mm. You know you're a child of God. When you look back and look at the exposure that you were given at that time, you were exposed to so much. Yeah. You know, the go-getters, the lifestyle, the SABC, mm. whatever. Mm. And then where you are today, you know. Don't you God was preparing you? No, what he definitely think? was. But um, to answer the first part of your question mm. about how I felt, I felt like a failure. I was like, Beggy, you couldn't mm. even keep a whole marriage together. Look at you. Mm. Coming back from South Africa with two kids. Mm. Different fathers on top of that. Mm. What the heck? What's wrong with you? And then to think what other people were thinking, I don't even know. And I, and I didn't want to know because... When one's gone, but how would you walk? How and would you I carry yourself? I, I, yeah. I had to. I think that was part of my confidence journey. Like, my daughter is watching. My son is watching. So if I'm going to walk around moping mm. around, you know, like, I, I, what's on the floor? The floor doesn't have anything for me. Mm. So I had to really lift my head. And my young sisters, 
you know, would be, the, like, they had, they were torn between supporting me and also going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, you know. What have you done? Yeah, supposed to be the older one, mm. look at your life, mm. and, and then they were also, no, you can do it, you mm. can do it. Mm. And it, that's really been the relationship, you can do it, and mm. then when I'm not doing it, like, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, mm. I'm trying, I'm trying. Mm. But the thing that kept my head up were, were my kids. Mm. And I'm like, I, I can't fail my kids now. Mm. I cannot, and I have to um, do it within reason, within my moral campus, because there mm. were certain things I said, hey, I'm not going to do this, it. This, I, I will not do. Mm. This I will not do. Mm. So, yeah, it was, it it wasn't a nice feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, Tim, you see, twenty fifteen, my life changed in twenty sixteen. Just a year after coming back to Zim, my mm. life took a turn around in twenty sixteen, mm. and then it's just been, you know, fluctuating ever since then. And then looking at my life now and with what I'm doing and the exposure mm. that I had before, and. Only now I understand that God was setting me up. Mm. Only now. Mm. But back then, ooh, I would be like, is there a God? Like, where? Mm. And there was a time when I, I would have like a, you know, love-hate relationship with God. And then I listened to a, a sermon that said, whether you like it or not, God is still God. Mm. Even if you wake up today and you don't pray, mm. He's still God. God. So God. You wake yeah. up today and you scream and you say, I don't want, he's mm. still, still God. God. So yeah. choose wisely. Mm. Choose which side. Yes, mm. it's, a, it's allowed to go through emotions. It's allowed yeah. to go through anger and all. But mm. at the end of the day, whom are you turning to to fix it for you? Mm. And I was like, oh man. I hate it when sermons make sense. I know, especially when, you know, <laughs> I remember one time um, my husband was talking to me and I was like, imagine if God showed you where he wanted you to be. Mm -hmm. But he showed you what you were going to go through. You would say no. You would say no. So you know what? Some <laughs> of these things, sometimes we have to, to just so take true. them and, you know, because I'd be like, this is so unfair. Yeah, you'd this be like, so am I? You know? So I think sometimes, like, God will show you a glimpse of where I'm taking you, mm -hmm. but he will not show you what you're going to go through to, to, to get to where you are. And this journey that you went through, I mean, in essay. Yo, for a woman at for a young woman at 23, 24, thinking you yeah. made it, I'm living in this beautiful house. Yeah. Next minute you're being chucked out. Hey. And then going back to Zim with your Changani bag and starting almost starting life it was fresh. Like, yes. It, it, it was like my own version of Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Did you watch it? Yes. Yes. Ish. I was like, oh, but actually, um, that was the twist. Because my, my husband now, we've been married for three years. The way he proposed to me was just like in Diary of a Mad Black Woman. Oh, wow. And I'd never spoken to him about it. But deep down somewhere, I was like, hey, Shemari, you know, the next guy who's going to propose to me, I want it to be just as Domu can take a ring. And, you know, <sighs> and never, words are powerful. Never shared it with anybody. It was just, you know, I would just say it to myself. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. Wow. Exa like, to the T. And I was like, oh, it happened. <laughs> When the time is right, I, the Lord, will make it right. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, I think sometimes we go through these journeys, we don't realize that um, when we get to a certain point, God will make things right he for does. us. He and does. I think that's what I want you to take people through that journey of you then coming back, the turnaround in 2016, mm -mm. and then you finding love again. You know? Yeah, oh, so so 2016 with the turnaround was when I hosted Miss Tourism Zimbabwe. Mm. I was serving in church and I'm always big on people who ask me, hey, Becky, how did you get there? And I'm like, eh, I think I've shared so much. Um, just go through my page because my Instagram page especially is like a story. Mm. You will definitely see from mm. where I put I got it up on up, guys. Mm. Uh, just don't go to Facebook, okay? Like I'm mm. still trying to delete those pictures. Like, who is that girl? No, don't. No, don't. no, no. no my God. People must understand. I, there's a story. You know what? I promise you. You know I do that. I mean, like we all go through phases and life happens to us. But if we're going to be authentic and people to understand it, I said, you know, someone said to me, why don't you delete all those other pictures? And I said, no. Yeah, yeah, you know I what? get you. I Someone get must you. get me, must look at that picture and then look at where I am. And, and see think, the growth. Okay, and see the growth. And it's real. And it's real. Yeah. And also to understand when, when I say that God is working in my life, people must see it. Could you God is working in my life. That's exactly There's one how. particular picture on Facebook. Um, one of my cousins sent it to me and she's like, hey, ah, we thank God. Do you know <laughs> a, 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 a lollipop? 
Yes, my body was like that. I was like a stick and then just a big head because of stress. 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 I was a stumble yeah. like this. And then, you know, like, look at me now, like, piggity pie. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. You know? So I, I want people to understand that if, if you are going to do anything, if you want to be used of God, you must understand that you were created for a purpose. Exactly. And that purpose is to glorify God yeah. in whatever yeah, sphere it is that you're doing. You are here hosting moments with Nyengete Rai, mm. right? Mm. You are touching someone's life mm. by this platform, on this mm. platform. There's other things that you're involved in. Mm. Those things must change people's lives. Mm. And they, it must glorify God. Mm. By glorifying God, it's when people ask you, hey, Nyenge, how do you do it? Mm. Ah, it it's, 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 it's not me, yo. Mm. It's God. Mm. Then they say, how? Mm. Talk to me about this relationship with God. Mm. And it gives you a platform to witness. It gives you a platform to, to, give, um, to give a chance to someone to, to give their life to Christ. Mm. So I was serving in church. I would be doing testimonies. I'll be doing announcements. Or if the man of God wants to speak to someone, I'll be the one running with the microphone in church. And... Mm. And, I'll, and I'd oh, get home and I'd be like, Ooh, why did you know today's service was amazing? Did you see what I did? I ran in mm. church today and I did this. Mm. And, you know, r remember me, Hezekiah, when his life was about to end, what did he go and do? Mm. He went and he faced the wall and he prayed and he said, if you kill me today, who will praise you? If you kill me today, if you take my life today, who will help those people? Who will feed those orphans? Who will do this? Who will do that? So I learned about, you know, serving God and doing something for God so that when, when the time comes when you say, I'm cutting your lifeline, you're like, ah, but I'm going to die. 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 Who will announce the arrival of the men of God? Who will give praises to you? I'm going to die. So every Sunday I would, you know, do that. Mm. Then I was picked out by one of the guys in church. And this is also one of the things, be good to people mm. for no reason. Mm. Don't be good to Nyenge because you think Nyenge is going to, to hook you up with. No, mm. just be nice to Nyenge because you're nice to Nyenge. Mm. Right? And you, you never know where your help is going to come mm. from. So two of my biggest jobs were because I was nice to people mm. and also because I know what I'm doing. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> yes. I was, uh, I was nice to people, kind to them, and it worked out for my good. 2016, the, the reason why I hosted Miss Tourism 2016 was because of a gentleman that I used to serve with in church, and they were like, oh, no, I'm, I'm working with these people. They're looking for someone to do something. Can you come through? Yeah, sure. I did what they asked me to do, and they were like, but Munu, you bo. That Sunday night, and we did the whole production right up until the stage, and... I was hungry for that stage. Wow. I was hungry for it. And um, the man of God said to me, uh, what's his name? Um, Prophet Ed Branson. Mm. I almost called him by his first name. I was going to be like, <laughs> anyway, Prophet Ed Branson says to me, no, in, in a couple of months, it was in August when he gave me the prophecy. He says, in four months, you're going to host a big show here in Zimbabwe and you're going to host it with someone named Teach. So in my head, I was thinking, teach my Teach my dad. <laughs> I mean, like, if you hear Tichka, you just think Tichka does. Mm. Four months later, that was November. On the 26th of November, 2016, I hosted Miss Tourism Zimbabwe alongside uh, Tich Mawoni. Oh, yeah, Tich Mawoni. I didn't even know him. Mm. I didn't even know him. So I was like, oh, this is the Tich. And only then it clicked. And I was like, when God really aligns you and you walk in his purpose and you walk in his plan, there were a few scare moments where it seemed like I wasn't hosting it. And I was like, God, you know how hungry I am for mm. the stage and I'm ready. I've been practicing. Mm. I've been rehearsing. And I hosted it. Mm. And that's when I got, you know, the calls from radio stations. Mm. I went and I worked for ZFM. I was with ZFM for seven years. Mm. And then I moved on to another radio station. I'm now with Capitalk, mm. which I didn't just realize how beautiful talk radio was. Mm. And I, I'm such a talker. Talker. <laughs> you mm. know? And then um, my second big job, because of serving, was with the BBC, how I mm. became a BBC correspondent reporter. Mm. And it's not like I was sitting and not doing anything. Mm. I know where I want to be like five years from mm. now. Like you can poke me in my sleep. I'll mm. tell you, I want to be at this place doing mm. this and I'm sitting on the table with so-and-so. Mm. And 
because I was kind to this person and I was always cordial with them. Hey, how are you? You're friendly and, mm. and you're good at what you're doing because you mm. can be friendly, but you're bad at the job. Mm. Be good, work on yourself mm. and, and, and build yourself, build invest yourself in yourself, upgrade yourself. Personal, there yeah. we go. Personal, personal development. development. Yeah. Mm. When the opportunity knocks, you must be ready for mm. it. As opposed mm. to the opportunity knocks, and you're like, we're mm. not going I'm not going to study mm. this and, you know, mm. be ready. Mm. And that's how I got the, you know, like the, the BBC mm. correspondent r reporting job. And in, with all of this happening, I was still serving in church. Mm. I was still very much humble and still trying to find love mm. in, 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 in it in all. In it all. In it all. Mm. I've dated men who be like, you've got two kids. Why are you refusing to sleep with me? And mm. I'm like, hey, who went around mm. and told these men that because I've got two kids, I've got two kids. I'm, I'm easy really now. Mean. Like open mm. sesame, the legs mm. will just open. I don't, I don't know who told them. Mm. I don't. And then I would uh, date, I dated one guy who said to me at that time I was 34. Mm. He says to me, you're 34. Who's going to marry you? with your two kids and I'm like, ah, but you are here. Are you mm. not here? Mm. Are you not are you not dating me or am I blind? Like mm. what's going on here? Mm. So finding love was was hard. Mm. And I and I'm just thinking I don't remember it, it being hard like this when I was single. Mm. And um, in as much as we don't want to to put it into cognizance, but after kids, mm. after a certain age, it's a mm. bit hard to find love but not impossible. Not impossible. Nothing is impossible with God. Nothing is impossible. It's difficult. Mm, mm, it's it's hard. Mm, it's tedious. Mm, it's ridiculous. Mm, but not impossible. Mm, not in not impossible. Mm, so by the time I met my husband, um, I had just broken up with a, a guy whom I thought was going to marry me. Mm, uh, the day he was supposed to meet my hey family members, mm. just introductions. Yeah, it's not like. Well, um, no, no, just my introductions. It was a no-show. Mm. It was a no-show. And then I was like, Saka Beki, what are you? I had to sit down with myself. And I'm like, who are you? You, you know, like how you asked me at the beginning, mm. who's Rebecca? Mm. You know, if you had asked me, Kudara, I wouldn't have. I'd be like, ah, Rebecca is a multimedia broadcaster. Mm. Like, no, 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 not your title. Who, who are you? Who are you? Mm. And that's when I got the answer that I am, I am a woman created to manifest the goodness of God in every sphere. I'm born to uh, affect the community for Christ. So how am I going to do that? My marriage has to affect the community for Christ. Mm. So whoever is going to marry me has to know what my mandate is. And then my mandate and his mandate should make sense. Should make sense. Mm. And trust me, it made sense with this guy. But mm. something was not right. Mm. And probably God was telling me, mm. run, Becky, run. Oh, no. Mm. And I just didn't listen. Mm. And I just didn't listen. We do have blinkers sometimes because Dude. because I think as humans we 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 want to put our own one plus one is equals to two. Yeah. And God is saying, nah, ah, ah, this one is like five or six or zero. And you're like, no, but God is saying it's one. Mm. You're saying no, but God's saying this is adding mm. up. One plus one is this is two. But God mm. is like, I just go balance. Mm. I'm like, no, but Mary. And we have scriptures to back it up mm. also. We've got, hey, but you said in your words. Word. And God is like, mm. wow. What am I going to do with it? Mm. Uh, I think it's Romans chapter 12 that speaks about the good and acceptable Thinking. will of mm. God. The good, mm. the perfect, and the acceptable will of God. Mm. And I said, Mwari, I don't want to be in your acceptable will. Mm. I don't want to be in your good will. I want mm. to be in your perfect, 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 perfect will. Mm. Introduce my boyfriend to my mom after this breakup. It was, it was a while. I went to Israel. Beautiful experience. Mm. Came back. And that's when this, my husband now then asked me to be like, to like date him. But he, he didn't even ask me. And now he, he didn't woo him. Mm. I always tell him, I don't know. No, he just said, I want to wife you. Mm. And I was like, oh. Oh. Okay, second, so mm. right? And but when I came back from Israel, uh, he really then made his intentions known that mm. no, I want a life with you. And I'm like, mm. you don't even know me. Like, yeah, let's get to know each other. Mm. Um, introduced him to my mom. This was before she passed on. My mom passed on in April 2018. Mm. And my mom was like, I like him. 
She never met him, never seen him face to face. She would just hear about him. She would see my face when I spoke about him. Uh, or when I didn't pay attention to her, she kind of said, mm, Diego. I'm like, oh, sorry, my mama, tea, you know? And I, I never thought, Kuti, I would fall in love again. Mm. I never, I just thought, mm. I just need a man to take care of me and my children. I, I, I need a father mm. for my kids. I just, That's and then cool. this man came, broke down walls that I had put up and I was like, oh, I'm never yes. letting anybody but in. in I will love you, but I won't be in love mm. with you. Right now, Nyenge, I am smitten. Oh my mm. gosh. I am sure. smitten. I am you know, smitten. you just said, oh, my <laughs> husband, your eyes, your face. Your, you should see how you glow. I am smitten, but oh. I never thought it would happen for me because I got married at 36. Mm. 10 years after my divorce. Wow. That's when I remarried. Wow. And I was like, who would want me? Because these men had planted that thing in my mm, head. No who one would wants want you. me? And um, so part of my confidence coaching is talking to yourself. Mm. Um, there's there's an event that you did some time ago and you gave us cards that were written I am mm. on it. Yeah, I still have it. And mm. I add, you know, every, mm. like it's now back to back and then mm. in, into a book <laughs> and all of that. And mm. it just expands. And I teach my students that, mm. that if you don't have faith in yourself, how do you expect the next person to come through True. and have faith in you? Or if you don't mm -hmm. love yourself, how do you expect the next person to come through and love you? Mm -hmm. So if they're coming to love me, you are loving me based on the love that I have already. Oh you God. are not completing me. Mm -hmm. You're complimenting exactly. what is there I already. I people that, you know, I don't look for... Do you know, mm, my Sharon, she's my mentor. I love her. She, oh, she's amazing. So she, she always says to me, first of all, you must love yourself. Mm-hmm. You must you must be whole. Yeah. Because why do you want someone else to so damunu asingadiki? If you can't love yourself, how can someone else love you? Yeah. So you have to love yourself first. Yeah, and to, it to was, allow yeah. someone else to to love you. Exactly. Mm. And, 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 and it's, it's not always easy to mm. like um, love yourself. It's, it it's not easy. You mm. you are looking at all your flaws. There was a time when I thought my voice sounded like a man. Mm. I was like. Hey. Me dear, ne voice rangu ibu. And you're such an amazing. Thank you. You're you really are. Thank you. Your energy, I don't know. You get it. <laughs> your energy, <laughs> your energy is amazing. But just oh, Becky, this finding love again. Mm -hmm. You know why I really wanna really Let's zone get into in it. on it. It's yeah. Because a lot of people once they've um, either had children, divorced. Um, tried love, failed. They just feel like I'm done. Nothing's gonna happen. Let me just go on with life or whatever, and let me just just sell my sell myself short, kind of. Yeah. Because I don't think this is gonna happen for me. I really wanna. I want you to really zone in on that. On what made you like now? When I look at you, when you said, "Oh, I'm in love." What? What is it? You know, like your face just glowed. I mean. I want you to give someone, I want you to encourage yeah. someone out there who's just sitting and thinking, I'm never finding love. Like I'm never finding love. All right. I, I think it, it will just go back to loving yourself and, and knowing why you want to remarry or knowing why you want to find the love because you could do it for the wrong reasons. Mm. I almost got married for the wrong reasons. Mm. I probably could be married to that other guy mm. and yes the money will be there but i'll be probably miserable because mm. Mm. and i i wrote it down there's power in writing things down mm. but not just writing things down you write it down and you read them out loud you must hear your voice say it mm. so i wrote down that i am going to get married again mm. so i moved from i am going to get married again to mm. i am married to mm. a husband who is like one mm. two three four mm. and god will never come through and give you a package that is 100 percent and he had 60 percent mm -hmm. and then you compliment each, each other, other. Mm. maybe you are like chilling at 40 mm -hmm. we're chilling at 20 we all fall short of the glory yeah, of we God. We all fall short of the glory of God. Mm. So mm. with the finding love, I know society has planted it in our heads mm. that a woman after a certain age, mm. and if you believe it, it's true. Mm. 
But if you believe otherwise, it is also true. Mm -hmm. And then you work in that trajectory. You just move with that line. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want? Do you want to be married? Because I know there are some women who say, I wasn't built for marriage. Mm -hmm. I am just, you know, doing one, two, three. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for you, sister, Holy Ghost. It is mm -hmm. fine. Go and be that. Mm -hmm. But for the rest of us who like to be cuddled, who like to be loved, who, uh, who thrive on, on physical touch. Mm. Physical touch is my love language. Like mm. if my husband doesn't touch me, he's got this thing where he does, where he taps mm. my bum. Mm. And I'm thinking, if he doesn't do that, I'm thinking, are we fighting? Mm. Right? Yeah. So I'm big on, on touch. physical touch. I'm mm. big on, on family. I'm big on mm. that. And, I was, and God knows I'm big on that. Mm. So there was no way God wasn't going to give it to me mm. because he says, I give you the desires of your, of heart. your heart. The mm. fact that you want that, I'm the one who placed it in you mm. for you to desire it. Mm. It's not desires from your head. Mm. God doesn't give you desires from your head. No. He gives you desires that he has placed in you. So if you desire a certain car, mm. it's because God has placed the desire in, in you heart. for you to desire that mm. so that he can bring it to pass. Mm. So God knew exactly what I wanted, what I desired, what I needed. And then I developed myself to be the woman or the wife that I wanted to be for the husband I was praying for. Because mm. you are busy praying for God to prepare a prince for you. But are you the right person for him? Are you, are, are you a princess? Are you a princess? Are you hey, a princess? Mm. Yes, I mm. see a lot of women going, princess treatment or nothing, mm. it's okay. Mm. Are you giving yourself that princess treatment before another man comes to give you princess treatment? Mm. And when he comes into your life, he must just come to elevate. Mm. Even my wardrobe changed when I started dating this guy. Mm. It was evident that there was a man mm. in Becky's mm. life. Was I dressing okay? Yeah, it was, mm. it was decent. Mm. And I, I, people wouldn't look at me like, I'll go no mm. But it got better. Mm. And I was like, okay, now we're talking. Mm. Now we're talking. Even mm. the place where I started staying, it, got, mm. it, it changed mm. because of the person that came into my life. Mm. But he came to complement exactly. what was there already. already. Mm. My brand as mm. Becky K, mm. uh, okay, Miss Becky at that time, mm. didn't have structure. There was mm. no order. Mm. The right man will come and put order in your life. In your life. Mm. So don't be distraught that, oh, I'm divorced. A, a, or second marriage, will it ever happen to me? If you want it to happen to you, it will happen to you. But you have to draw the line and have a moral compass and say, there are certain things I have to stop doing. How will you get married a second time? You are busy dating Bobby, John, and Peter. Mm -hmm. And then you're saying, God, bring my husband. God, bring mm -hmm. my husband. God will be like, I'm waiting for you to release Bobby, John, and Peter. Mm -hmm. And then I can bring your husband. Mm -hmm. But women fear being alone. Mm -hmm. Women fear that gap of, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Who will pay my bills? Pay my you. Bills. Mm -hmm. And, 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 and the, the thing is, don't be lazy. I, I, <laughs> if I was lazy, mm -hmm. Yenke, you'd be hearing stories about me. That's mm -hmm. one thing for sure. If I was lazy, you would be hearing, ah, mm. women shouldn't be lazy. Work. Mm. God will meet you at your point of need. Mm. I would be working, I, I used to do makeup for uh, uh, weddings. Mm. Every weekend I would make sure I'm booked two, three weddings. Mm. I was working and I was like, God, I don't want to do this for the rest of my life. Mm. I also want to rest. I want to... Mm. And you know, God answers. Mm. He, does. he does. He does. God answers. Yeah, so you, you, are, you are waiting for some Prince Charming to come and save you. Mm. And I'm really happy for those who, who say, I need to stand up. No. Mm. God will bring you exactly that. What you want. What you want. He mm. will. In any angle, I'm, I'm not the stay-at-home type of woman. I want to get my own. Yeah, like yes, I want to get my own, but I want my, a man who will also, you know, come through I mean, and take care of you, exactly. you know, and carry his weight around. Mm. And, and God has given me that. Mm. So don't cancel yourself out mm. because you've got children. Mm. God is not deaf mm. to your pleas, mm. but right. you are not disciplined in, 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 in your prayer life. You're not disciplined in, in the desires of your heart. You're not mm. disciplined in, in life in general. You must mm. be disciplined. Be focused on one thing and go for it until you get it. Get it. Someone said to me, um, what do you think caused your divorce? And I said, my divorce was going to happen either way, mm. but it may have been prolonged um, or, or delayed 
by maybe one or two things that I could have done. Because I was praying. Mm -hmm. You know those midnight prayers? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My marriage, my marriage. I got tired. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was sheep. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then God was like, ah, Anita, Iribo. Maybe he could have turned his life around. Maybe he could have changed his mind. Could no, look at your wife. Look at this. This is happening. Mm. So God was like, oh, about mm -mm. no, my daughter about let's mm. let's let's remove, let's you, remove you and from, put yeah. you in a place where you are wanted. Mm. So for my marriage to work right now is determined on whether I am praying or not, mm. because I got my marriage through prayer, prayer. and I'm going to sustain it through prayer. through prayer. So however it is that you got your marriage. That is how you're going to sustain, sustain it. it. Mm. That's how you're going to have to sustain your marriage. Because mm. mm. And you have to go back and be like, ah, mm. and then you, that, that's how you end up sustaining mm. it. So mm. whatever it is that you want, you must be disciplined enough to work for, for it. it. Be disciplined mm. enough mm. to work for it. And, and, you, pray. and you, for me, you know, when you, what what you said that's so powerful because the praying, like, um, you got your marriage through prayer, and you're gonna sustain it through prayer. Yeah. And 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 I think the power of prayer is very important. I mean, the times when we are weak. I mean, like, I get weak as well. You know, life happens, and then you're yeah. like, oh God. But yeah, that sustaining through prayer is mm -hmm. just so powerful. It is. Yeah. Look, prayer has played a really big part in my life. If I don't pray, the devil will have his way with me. Mm. And he's like waiting for me because I'm big, I'm vocal. Mm. I'm, I'm God this and mm. Christ this and you must, mm. you must. And mm. Sakali, if I just slip, the devil is waiting to, to have me for mm. breakfast, lunch and supper. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. I, and, and, and I can't afford, mm. I can't afford mm. to do that. You know what you say that is so just like powerful and you know, you talked about how you've, you've rebranded yourself and how you've branded yourself and how you've understood yourself, how you've loved yourself. Mm. You know, you once said to me, oh, I didn't really understand you until tonight. There's an event that happened, some wedding event, and I was speaking on personal branding. Oh, yes, And then yes, you said to yes. me, you know, I've been trying to understand you all this time, but today I really, really understand I you. I did, I did. <laughs> and you know, when you were speaking, I was literally just seeing all those, like, you know, like, you know, like, the, my presentation, like, understand yourself, who you are, what your values are, your, and I was just no. laughing, and, then, and that thing you just came that. to me when you said to me, oh, okay, now I get what you do. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you know what, because I would see you when you were this force, like, Nyenga would walk into a room, and I'd be like, wow, I would just look at you and I'd be like, God, can you, am I a spoon? <laughs> can you not see me? This is, this is, this is what I want to, this, this is what I want to do. You, you, you commanded so much respect. Mm. when you walked into that room and you looked lovely all the time like there was never a thread out of place <laughs> i'm coming to your wardrobe by the way. Uh, and like welcome. never a thread out of place and you were like wow okay let's hear what she has to say mm. and then you opened your mouth bam 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 and i was <laughs> like ha! now i get this woman now i get mm. why you you function the way that you function mm. and you speak the way that you speak mm. and you charge the amount that you charge no. for speaking engagements. I, I, like, I, I, I entered a room where they were talking about <laughs> you. And they were like, yeah, so we want Nyenge to be the keynote speaker. She can't say, eh, but I know, I don't go do that. And then the person was like, no, 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 no. That's her worth. Mm. And we're going to pay her mm. that amount. I was like, oh, just go. How much is her? So she can't say, they were like, they, did, like, they couldn't even say the amount. Like, and they slid this paper. And I was like, eh. <laughs> And I was like, mm. Nyenge charges that much? Mm. They're like, yeah. And I was like, oh, no, she knows what she's doing. Mm. And that's, mm. the, the, that's the road that I want to, to get to. And that's why branding was so important to me. And that's why I would yeah, like yeah. watch you. And, and I'd be like, God, what can I pick from Nyenge? And th that's what I do. Mm. I'm, I'm a bag of, uh, of, of mentors. Mm. I'm a bag of mentors. I don't we have all like are. one all mentor. Are. No, exactly. mm. The bag of That's mentors. That's how we grow. That's so I'll pick this from that one, pick mm. that one, pack that one. Mm. I know from Ruvenico, I, I, I picked trying to be softer. Mm. Like, come on, Becky, be graceful. Mm. And just, mm. you know, just be soft. Mm. And mm. But yeesh, mm. God help me. I'm mm. still <laughs> I'm still on that mm. road because there's a time and a place to be, to soft. be so, yeah. so soft and all. Yes, also, you find your place because I truly believe that we are all God has created us differently mm -hmm. and for a different purpose. And we come as we are. 
you know, yeah, yeah. and you will serve a certain audience the way you are. Thank you. You know, you want to be in a place where people want you. They want Becky. They want Becky mm. who's loud. Who's mm. loud. You know, there's a time I would want to just say, you know what, I want to, maybe I'm too loud. Maybe I'm, then my husband said to me, but that's who but Nyenge that's, is. That's who Nyenge is. So that's who you are. So you take everything. We learn from different people mm -hmm. with discernment and wisdom, and then we create our brand. And you yeah. created an amazing brand. Ha, I'm not going to sleep today. You, 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 said you, an no, you created an amazing brand and hey. we, you're on an amazing trajectory. And just to close us off, and I know this has been an amazing afternoon. We could have gone on and on and on I and on for hours. There's just so much I want to talk to you about. I know. But just to close us off, and, and like I've said, that moments is about life lessons. Mm -hmm. You know, in your 38 odd life, years on <laughs> earth. <laughs> I just want to just want you to give us a few key things that you okay. There's a key life life lessons, mm -hmm. but you, while you're thinking of your life lessons, I'm just gonna ask you a few fun questions that we ask people before we go. Oh my gosh, I'm scared of those. Those fun questions are always so scary. No, they're not too scary. What's your favorite color and why? <laughs> okay, okay, it's it's gonna be a long answer, mm -hmm. but for the longest time, I thought pink was my favorite color until my husband said to me, baby, can you count how many pink things you have? You have in this. <laughs> like one. And no, I think I had like four, four items, but the majority of the things that I have in my wardrobe are blue. And I, and I love blue. I love blue, but I'd never really put it as my favorite color. Wow. So if you are to ask me, like you have just asked me now, mm -hmm. blue is my favorite color. It's solid. It's cool, it's calm, it's straightforward. And it doesn't have a lot of, you know, external colors. It's either it's navy blue, or it's baby blue, or it's blue. <laughs> wow. And coming from my background of marketing and branding, yeah. blue is stable. That's why I find most banks and oh. funeral policies and insurance companies stability. have blue. Oh, wow. Sta stability and safe and trust. But blue comes in some. That's really me. Really understand. Oh, blue. That's me. All right. And favorite animal and why? Favorite animal. I like a tiger. Wow. Why tiger? It's beautiful to look at. Very cunning, but smart. You know, like it. it, it like it's the king of the jungle. No, the lion is the king of the jungle. Nah, 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 nah. The tiger. We are the king of the jungle. Oh, 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 oh! It's personal. Okay, sorry, <laughs> Shumba. Um, tiger for me, uh, like it's cunning, you know, like it, like it, it's smart, it's mm, smart. Mm. It, it won't just be like, woo, here I am, mm, you know, mm. it will calculate, yeah. and it's beautiful to look at mm. the stripes. Mm. And uh, yeah, I just think it's it's it's, it's beautiful, it's, it's it's feisty. Like when mm. you think of um, of an inner animal, like, ah, tiger, like mm. I'm feisty, mm. let's go. Mm -hmm. Wow. And what book are you reading right now? Or oh, I've just finished reading. And what lessons have you learned from it? Okay, I'm currently reading The Eight Rules of Love by mm -hmm. Jay Shetty mm -hmm. and Toys for Adults, um, Arthur Marara. Oh, by Arthur Marara. Yes, Arthur, so yeah. I'm, I'm between those books uh -huh. um, because it's, it's, it's one of those books where you read and take notes mm -hmm. and then implement. Mm -hmm. Um, I just finished reading Ring Fence by Sam Gemshaw. Oh, yeah, I read that book. That book is amazing. I love ring fence. <laughs> I don't know if this says anything, but yeah. that book, yeah, yeah, it spoke to every aspect of me as a woman. Mm. It spoke about my money, it spoke about my love life, mm. it spoke about my feelings, it spoke about mm. my friendships and mm. um, how to navigate, mm. you know, the friendships. Like, you know, communicate. Mm. Be true to, to who you really are and mm. when you love something, go for it, regardless mm. of what uh, people say. Mm. And it also taught me not to be a people pleaser. Wow, yeah. Yeah. It did. Oh, fantastic. Because yeah, I'm a recovering people pleaser, but I've learned here yeah, and I've Ooh. learned that. So mm. we are packing our bags. Yeah. And we're going to the we're going for our flight right now. Where are we going? We are going to Maldives. Wow! We ah! are going to Maldives. We are going I think Maldives, to Maldives is a destination. Why? I think you're the second, like you're the third probably person I've interviewed who every time I say pick our bags, where are we going? Maldives. No, but no, have you, I don't know if it's because like um, the internet has been pushing it, 
but I've just been seeing Maldives and seeing myself in my little item and, mm. you know, sipping on a pina colada and just <laughs> like big sun hat and in the waters and oh my gosh, like Maldives, let's go now. Can we let's go, go now? now? Like, let's go. We'll go soon. I promise. We'll, make it, we'll make it happen. Maldives, <laughs> baby. Mal Ay! Nyenge, why did you do this? No, I'm just going to be like, Maldives. Yeah, you can dream, Check the tickets dream about and it. We'll make it. We'll make it happen. I'm going to put we'll on my vision it. board now. Yeah. I'm big on vision boards. I think you know that I'm very big on very vision big, boards. Very big, yeah. So just to close us off, Becky. Yeah. Life lessons. From mm -hmm. your 38 years on this earth. Yeah. Give me five life lessons that you want to give to our viewers. Okay. I'll start with um, one that I've recently learned. <sighs> if the shoes are not comfortable, take them off. You, you can... Wear heels, yes, but not 24-7. It's going to affect you later on in life and you might not be able to bend it like Beckham. But um, if you have a, a comfortable pair of heels that still look good, wear them as opposed to doing 8-inch, 9-inch, like you, you really don't have to be, you don't have to be doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, lesson number two, take care of your skin. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's just put it as, as in health. We'll mm -hmm. make it as a health like a health tip. Mm -hmm. Take care of your skin, take care of your teeth. I have suffered with my like teeth and it's an ongoing battle, but we are winning, we are getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, take care of your skin, take care of your teeth, eat healthy. O always make it a resolution every year to add or to eat more vegetables than you did the year before. Mm -hmm. um, number three, travel. I've learned that you can plan to travel you don't always have to have the money at your disposal, but you can save for it mm -hmm. and see the world. It helps you to broaden your horizons. It helps you to think better. And even your quality of life mm -hmm. is, is improved. Um, number four, when you love, love wholeheartedly. Do not leave room for disappointment because if you love correctly, you are loving God and trusting that whoever he's bringing in your life, whether it's a romantic relationship or if it's friendships, that he's bringing the right people for a purpose and for a reason. And you must just know where to place people oh. in life. Mm. Um, don't bring people out, uh, from, I mean, don't bring people from the outer court into your inner court. Don't take people from the inner court to the outer court unless if they deserve it. Mm. And um, the fifth one would be don't overshare and pray. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, share, but don't overshare. Okay. Wow. And wow. always be prayerful. Yeah. Prayer, prayer to like sum everything mm -hmm. up. Pray, 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 pray. pray, pray. 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 Have a relationship pray. with God. Amen, amen. And what a way to close us out. Yeah. Let's all not forget to pray. Pray about every little thing in our lives. You know, I think sometimes we think some things are too little or too big for us to pray about. But <sighs> Becky. Rebecca. <laughs> I don't remember that time I was sister, called like, I, yeah, 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 right, I, I right. feel like I'm in trouble. Like, what did I do? <laughs> Rebecca, what have I done? <laughs> You're my little sister. Yeah. I mean, literally, and I'm so proud of you. I'm proud of where your brand is going. Uh, I think I've, I've, I've shared with you and I've sent you messages. I'm sure you like, this woman is sending me odd messages. No, no, no. But I, take <laughs> them, I, I take them and I, you know, I hide them in my heart. I really do but, appreciate uh, I, I've been watching and your brand is amazing and I truly believe you're destined for greatness. I don't say it out of just saying it. Amen. I Oof. truly believe you're Took destined for trip. greatness and uh, keep going, uh, keep trusting God, keep, keep keeping God at the center of everything that you oh, yeah. do oh, and yeah. you'll definitely fly. You know? Thank you. I'm so excited for you and I uh, want to thank our viewers for watching this episode and please don't forget to subscribe to share and yeah thank you <laughs> yeah. thank you very much and yeah cheers to life cheers to life yeah, almost <laughs> done but yeah cheers to life probably grab a straw hi everyone you've been watching um uh, moments with nyinge terai please remember to subscribe and to turn on your notifications and to just follow me on all my social media platforms thank you